Hello everyone and welcome where today we've got brand new products to talk to you about in the form of the new Strix and Z Star and Z Star XV Golf Ball. But before we get into all that and before we get into the tech, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, see loads more content from all of us here at Golf Shake to help you play more and play better. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell as well so you'll be kept up to date with everything as soon as it hits the channel. Now We've seen quite a lot of new golf balls or, or new versions of golf balls coming out early this year and Z-Star is the latest in the line of those. Now it's been a very popular golf ball with many golfers uh, and certainly um, when I've been selling them in the shop there's lots that are, are so sort of die-hard and fans that it's the only golf ball they'll look at so it's going to be really interesting to have a look at the tech and put these balls to the test. So let's take a look. So the first thing to be said is that with Z Star and Z Star XV, they're very much aimed at the better player, lower handicap golfer, and it's their tour level golf ball. Now, they've got quite a lot of um, people on the tour using uh, these different models of golf ball, and certainly the players that they have tend to hit the ball a hell of a long way. And when I've done tests in the past with Z Star and Z Star XV, they've always been very long. And with the testing that we've seen, um, that have been conducted by Strixon, but also other manufacturers, that the XV ball does tend to go that little bit further than just about anything else on the market. So it'll be interesting when we get a chance to test them in the Performance Centre whether that's still true about these two new models. Now, the technology and, and sort of the update to the technology centres around a couple of things. One is a brand new um, cover that these balls have. Uh, so it's fourth generation spin skin cover with what's called SERM technology. Now SERM is basically a, um, a chemical that's added to the cover and the bonds are very kind of elastic and movable between them. So when we actually hit this golf ball, more of the cover will get into the grooves on those kind of iron and wedge shots that we're hitting and impart a little bit more spin on them. So we'd expect this to spin a little bit more than maybe previous models or um, maybe even some of the other ones that it competes with out there on tour. So it'd be interesting to test that as well. Now, um, the dimple pattern's changed slightly. So 338 dimple pattern in both balls um, and the core as well has changed. So in the um, Z Star, which we'll look at in a second, uh, it ha it's a three-piece golf ball and a much larger core. Z Star XV has like a dual core inside there, and again, um, it, it's it's a solid core, but also it, it's a bit softer in the centre and, and gets um, harder as it gets to the outside of the core. So in the XV ball, it's designed to be that bit higher flight and um, slightly kind of higher spin, maybe with your longer shots. Whereas um, the Z Star golf ball will spin the most. Uh, on your shorter and, and green side sort of shots and Strix are actually saying it spins more than any other golf ball in their range on those uh, short game shots around the green so it'll be interesting to put that to the test as well so when I get to hit them on the track map what I'm going to do is actually hit some shorter pitchier sort of shots with both to compare as well as seven iron and drivers and just see what the differences are there in the two golf balls and hopefully they'll do exactly what Strix and say that they're going to. Now, um, let's get back to that core technology. Now, what I've actually done is, you'll see this in front of me, this contraption. So I actually walked into a hardware shop uh, in Turnbull's not long ago, um, and uh, spoke to two guys in there, Tom and Darren, and told them I wanted something that's gonna cut golf balls in half, and they literally, I, I thought they were gonna laugh at me. Um, gladly they didn't, but um, yeah, so we, I've got this tool here where I've cut these balls in half to take a look inside, and see exactly what the cores look like. So let's take a bit of a better look at those now. So when we take a look at both balls, we can see that um, I've got Z Star here, which you can see this kind of um, slightly larger core, um, whereas when we look at XV, we can see we've got the kind of blue that goes to green, so two different cores in there. Uh, and this dual core technology is what makes that XV easier to kind of get in the air and, and lift a little bit more um, but without sacrificing the distance. Now um, one thing to mention is especially when we put them down side by side you don't really notice because um, they've both got it but when we look at it against another tour level golf ball you can see that the cover is quite thick so um, Srixen have actually made this um, 0.6 millimeters thicker on uh, Z Star 
and it hasn't really changed a hell of a lot on XV, but um, but it, it, it's, it's still thicker than it was before. So um, I'll put a little cutaway on there that you can see as well, so you can see it alongside the Pro V1 golf ball, just to have a bit of a look at how um, the covers are ever so slightly different. But um, that's not to say one's better than another at all, it's just it's just different. So um, what these manufacturers are saying is that it just they're trying to make these, this ball as fast as possible and as stable as possible, but like I say, that slightly thicker um, cover is on there. Both have this fast layer core. Now, admittedly, they do it in slightly different ways, obviously with the dual core in the XV. Um, but like I said, the, the higher green side spin is expected from the Z-Star Golf Ball. Now, um, we're, we're expecting kind of mid to high flight with XV and kind of a mid, high, mid flight with... Um, the, the, the normal Z star so um, it'll be interesting again to put that to the test when we go in the performance center but I just thought it was quite interesting to show you actually inside a golf ball um, as it's not something that we tend to see a hell of a lot but let's go over to the performance center now and put these balls to the test and see if they do exactly what Strix and say they should do. So now we've had a chance to hit both of these in the performance center, let's take a look at how they perform. Now, I'll talk to you a little bit about what I did in the test. So I started off with a 56 degree wedge, just hit some kind of pitchy shots of about 25, 30 yards, just to see if there was that difference in there in the spin, which tricks and say that Z star should have that little bit more. And certainly when we look at the data here, we can see that um, when we're hitting the Z star golf ball, we're averaging, um, about 3,900, so just slightly short of 4,000 RPM. Um, whereas we can see the XV is that little bit lower, 3,700-ish, just under that. So we're getting a couple of hundred RPM more spin on a partial shot like that, which doesn't sound a lot, but it, it, it is really. For You wouldn't expect that big a difference between, between um, two quite similar tour level golf balls over that type of distance but we can see that the Z star is stopping quite a lot quicker. When we then move into a 7 iron, so these are just full 7 iron shots that I hit there on the performance centre, I hit probably about 20 shots with each one and then I went back and hit just 5 what I would class as half decent shots with um, with each one. Now we can see when we compare both of those on there that with um, XV we're getting uh, just over 6,000 RPM spin and five, just over 5.8 with Z star. So again um, this is flipped the other way now so we're getting uh, more spin with Z star on that longer shot which is exactly what they're saying should happen but more importantly they're saying it should be slightly higher and we can see that the average yes albeit five feet it is on average ever so slightly higher in ball flight but when we look at the distances XV is slightly edging it on total distance but we're talking a yard and a half so it's pretty negligible both balls going decent distance you know 100 and 180 yards to 185 it's kind of within that bracket both of them so both very very good numbers um, we can see that the ball speed though has come off slightly quicker with XV um, although I have, have swung it about a mile and a half faster um, a mile and a half uh, mile an hour faster sorry um, but the, the ball's leaving the face that bit quicker so we're seeing a bit more distance as well so no idea why that is but I'd imagine the ball speed increase is down to the, the dual um, core and that's exactly what it's trying to do now then when we move on to driver I'd already spoken about how Strix and generally are regarded as quite a long golf ball for, for tour players and um, it normally edges it by a couple of yards over anything else really so it, again it's negligible but it, it, when I've tested it before I've also found it quite long um, so if we look at Z-Star and Z-Star XV we can see on the data here we've got um, 
with the XV, on average, we're hitting it 295 carry, 319 and a bit yards total, which is, to be honest, probably the longest ball I've tested in a while. When we compare that again to uh, Z-Star, um, so Z-Star now, again, is spinning that little bit less, but the total distance is ever so slightly less. But it is not a lot. You know, if we were talking, um, if it was 10 yards or 15 yards, then fine. But we're within kind of five yards of each other here, which which is okay. You know, there's not really, you know, that can, over the shots I've hit there, that can be just one or two shots. You've maybe not quite struck out the middle of the face. But, you know, they, they were fairly decent hits. And you can see I, I was obviously swinging it quite well today and and striking it pretty good because the distances i mean for me to average like 320 yards is is a, a good day for me really so um very happy with the numbers and very happy with the performance now what i would say i've been critical of in the past when i've tried the z star and z star xv not so much z star because it, it kind of it's not the ball that really suits me but xv is the one that's always pitched at that higher club head speed and that sort of player who maybe wants to um, try and control uh, driver spin a little bit more and um, and help in that way. It sound it has been the thing that's put me off. So the fact that it, it sounded so hard, particularly when you were chipping and putting with it, was the thing that in the previous XV put me off. I'm pleased to say that Srixen have changed that and this ball feels much softer. So when we put with it and chip with it, um, I actually preferred the feel of this to to the Z Star. I thought the Z Star felt very, very soft, and that's not being critical. It's just just a preference of mine. Now, this feels very much more like um, the type of golf balls I, I tend to use. So, um, so I'd be interested to try this out on the golf course when we actually get chance. But it was great to try both these golf balls and really put them to the test in the performance center. Like I said, it'd be great to get out on the golf course and test them as well. Um, but such is the situation at the moment, that's quite difficult to do. But hope you've enjoyed that. Let us know if it's, is this a golf ball that you're wanting to try? Do you already use Strix and Golf Ball at the moment? Um, are you tempted to move into the new model? Let us know that as well, because I know price has also been quite a major factor for people when choosing a golf ball and Z Star tends to fall down a, a little bit in terms of uh, price so we're looking under the £40 mark, RRP is £40, it might just drop a couple of pounds under that but when we compare that to the other balls in this category, this tour level that are all going to retail probably above the um, £45 to £50 mark, somewhere in that bracket that might be the reason why you choose this. It, it's certainly not from a performance perspective why you would choose one of those more expensive balls because in, in fact the performance is very, very similar. And if you look at some of the other ball tests I've done with um, some of the new golf balls from the other brands, this stacks up really well uh, against them. So so yeah, it, it could be a golf ball that you should definitely try for this season. And, and who knows, you might find a performance difference there as well. So hope you've enjoyed the video. I've loved testing these. And like I say, drop your comments in below and we'll do our best to get back to them. So hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you all very, very soon.